Hello everyone, welcome back to a new session in Dentistry and more. So we have question paper discussion on pediatric dentistry and this will be the part one of many sessions and we'll be having uh, questions from uh, various uh, question papers of uh, university exam that is Kerala University of Health Sciences. So it starts with the first chapter that is introduction to pediatric dentistry. The first question was define pedodontics and mention its scope explain the pedodontic treatment triangle pedodontic treatment triangle is a very commonly asked question uh, where a treatment triangle where the child is at apex and the family and the dentist are at the other two corners so uh, an adult uh, requires a service to be carried out in his mouth and if it's not satisfied he will seek satisfaction elsewhere uh, whereas a child attends the dental service because he is forced to do so, he is not coming um, by his own uh, will. So the child will have to return even if he does not like the treatment. So what happens is we may expect the adult to put up with the unavoidable discomfort. Therefore, he has the freedom to choose his treatment and can also appreciate the outcome. Whereas a child there is no good reason for dentist attention. So child is in a very dynamic state of growth and development, whereas the adult is in a very static state. So consideration of the behavior as an integral part of child oral health care and needs. So we need to uh, highlight the child at the or we need to put the child at the apex with the consideration of to other corners that is family and dentist. Uh, defined by uh, Wright in 1975 and was later modified by McDonald in 2004 where the difference between child and adult with respect to the treatment where was uh, emphasized. So that was about periodontic triangle so uh, the first question was uh, define pedodontics and mention its scope so that is also again coming up in the next uh, question where uh, another question uh, is added that is uh, put a note on the setting up of a pediatric dental practice how the pediatric dental practice is differ from the adult dental practice or a regular dental practice so when we go to a pediatric uh, clinic, we can say it is totally different in its aesthetic, its appearance. It's more of uh, welcoming for a child. So definition of pedodontics, uh, it is given in the textbook of uh, Nikhil Mowa uh, as it's art and science and branch of dental science, which deals with comprehensive interceptive oral health in children from childhood to adolescent age particularly and complete health in general. So what about the pediatric dental practice or pediatric dental design? Okay, so we need to think about uh, the provision, space provision and um, the play area uh, and regarding the front desk, waiting area, the attire and presentation of the clinical staff, the colors, smell, sounds of dental clinic because every factor is going to affect the child's response or child's cooperativeness or child's behavior in the clinic and we need to think about the instruction for children and their parents and readiness to accept children the gifts and awards we give the audiovisual aids for entertainment and design of equipment in the clinic so every factor has an impact on child's behavior okay so uh, regarding the play area uh, it need to be very colorful it need to have uh, all the uh, children's favorite uh, characters or cartoon uh, models uh, friend desk people should be very uh, pleasant and very welcoming and waiting area should be uh, child friendly and regarding the attire and presentation they should uh, wear uh, pleasant colors uh, regarding gifts and rewards Give a child a token of appreciation for good work with a small gift at conclusion of a visit such as dolls, pencils, medals and never bribe the child before treatment. It should be given only after the treatment. And also regarding the audiovisual 
AIDS and it should be uh, like the TV set in front of the dental chair can distract the child enough to forget the dental treatment. Okay, so and children forget themselves while watching the cartoon films. And once the child is cooperative, it reduces the need of talking on the part of dental team. It is a good idea to have a camera attached to a TV uh, displaying the child uh, on the chair as children to allow watching themselves. And design of equipment is also important. Uh, a sufficient number of instruments, mouth props and other restraints should be there. Regarding the design of equipment, it's very important. A colorful towel to cover the restrained child, a camera to take first examination photograph, all should be there. Uh, the equipment must be accommodated to the child, not vice versa. And the uh, dental chair can be uh, modified to uh, look like a cartoon character. Or any innovation is uh, acceptable where the child is having a very cooperative environment in the dental clinic now we have a concept that is dental home so dental home is a concept uh, and it is defined by american academy of uh, pediatric dentist as the dental home is the ongoing relationship uh, between dentist and the patient uh, inclusive of all aspects of oral health care delivered in a comprehensive continuously accessible coordinator and family centered way so establishment of a dental home begins no later than 12 months of age and it includes referral to dental specialists when appropriate. So regarding the ideal uh, characteristics, I uh, have listed it out like to be accessible, should be family centered, should be continuous, comprehensive, coordinated, compassionate and culturally competent. And what are the advantages of dental home? That it embraces the importance of early intervention with optimal preventive strategies and it encourages the first dental visit by approximately one year and the practitioners can provide personalized preventive approaches for children based on their family histories and the oral examination and the risk factors can be identified and uh, the preventive intervention can be personalized to the needs of children so that was about dental home uh, now uh, we are into the pediatric dentistry that is definition and scope of pediatric dentistry so definition given by steward that is the practice and teaching of uh, comprehensive preventive and uh, therapeutic oral health care of a child from birth to adolescence so what are the scopes of pediatric dentistry so integration of appropriate didactic and clinical knowledge uh, from various specialties into a framework of quality health care for the children so pediatric dentists have extended services to fulfill the need of a special child including physically mentally and medically handicapped and it concentrates uh, uh, or it uh, branches out to all other specialties because it includes uh, preventive, uh, interceptive, orthodontics, uh, preventive resin restorations uh, and the remodeling process that is orthodontic uh, treatment regimen. So everything is involved so we just cannot uh, Isolate a pediatric dentistry specialty because it has branches in all other specialty. Even in the uh, pulpectomy, pulpectomy, it's more of a uh, endodontic therapy. So it is uh, virtually includes uh, essence of all branches of dentistry like diagnosis, oral surgery rehabilitation, endodontics, orthodontics, preventive dentistry and also includes a new uh, era like uh, I mean new technologies like lasers and nano dentistry. So that was the uh, scope of uh, pediatric dentistry. Now uh, all of you know what is infant oral health that is how it is important for the general health because uh, a good teeth which is taken care well at the 
beginning time uh, the patient or the child uh, when he becoming an adult there won't be much problem so prevention is always better and always it saves lots of money time and pain so a caries can be intervened at the very early stage it will be a very small cavity it can be easily filled without any pain as the time goes without any intervention what happens is it reaches to dentine pulp and periapical infection and it also affects the permanent tooth bud and it again complicates things so uh, early intervention can be done uh, so it is also helping uh, for the child to have a very good set of teeth without any uh, problems in the future so that is uh, infant oral health and its importance and diagnosis and treatment planning that is uh, the question was defined dental age mentioned the sequence of eruption of primary and permanent teeth and briefly describe its importance so dental age estimation is very vast topic it is estimated according to the last tooth eruption in oral cavity we have demogen method nolas method johnson's method masler method so all methods are there for age estimation and we know how the primary and permanent teeth are Uh, differs in, in its size, in its color, its number, uh, the shape, the number of grooves, the depth of grooves, and well sharp pointed cusp in permanent teeth, but it is not there in the primary teeth, and the size, the primate space, the leeway space, and the endon relation, the molar to molar relation, so everything. So uh, you can differentiate. Uh, based on many thing the every aspect is differ enamel dentin cementum root uh, alveolar size alveolar arch uh, the color uh, the shape um, the translucency everything is different even the number is different 20 and 32 uh, next we have the guidelines for prescribing radiographs for children and add a not on four film survey that is important so the techniques are same Uh, but only the thing is x-ray film is different x-ray film and we need to uh, emphasize on reducing the anxiety and reducing the number of films we can't go on repeating for get a best iop uh, because it will uh, disturb the child and we need to uh, finish it in a very short time uh, always uh, we need to apply the tell show do or modeling technique before uh, starting a x-ray procedure and uh, we can do it in a multiple visits the first visit uh, can be a tell show do or a modeling and we can uh, do the procedure i mean the taking of x-ray in the second visit because they are very apprehensive uh, always dampen the film to avoid the taste because it has a very uh, different taste uh, child might not appreciate the taste so we need to dampen it to avoid that taste and holding devices always use for post it because the child will not uh, able to follow the instructions given by the uh, dentist how to hold where to hold because uh, it's very difficult for the child so always keep holding devices for the posterior teeth so what are the film survey so film survey uh, it is like a combination of uh, x-rays in order to uh, get a proper uh, diagnosis okay so what happens in 3 to 5 year that is uh, when we have extensive caries or deep caries uh, what we are going to do is Uh, two posterior bite wing for no uh, apparent abnormalities we can take two posterior bite wings uh, using a size zero film when we have extensive caries we go for four film survey also in case of deep caries also four film survey when in case of six to seven uh, where more teeth are there so we need to go for eight film survey when there is extensive deep caries uh, we have to include um, additional periapical radiograph in 8 to 9 years we need to go for 12 film survey and 10 to 12 years uh, we need to think of 16 film survey or 12 film survey depending upon the size so this is how it is for uh, film survey 8 film survey 12 film survey and 18 film survey so what exactly is uh, this four film that is four film surveys maxillary and mandibular anterior occlusal and two posterior bite wing radiograph so this is four film survey where we have maxillary and mandibular anterior occlusal 
and two posterior bite wing okay two posterior bite wing and anterior uh, maxillary and mandibular two occlusal radiographs this is four film survey which is uh, used for uh, three to five years basically uh, so what is eight film survey eight film survey you can see uh, eight films where uh, we have maxillary and mandibular anterior occlusal then right and left maxillary posterior occlusal right and left maxillary posterior occlusal uh, and uh, right and left mandibular posterior periapicals and two posterior bite wings you can see eight radiographs where it includes uh, maxillary and mandibular anterior occlusal right and left maxillary posterior occlusal right and left mandibular posterior periapical and two posterior bite wing where regarding the 12 film survey it is having two primary molar to premolar periapical radiograph four canine periapical radiograph then uh, two incisor periapical radiograph and two posterior bite wing Whereas a 16 film survey, uh, 12 film survey plus 4 permanent molar radiograph. So that was about uh, the film survey. It is very commonly asked question. You need to write which all radiographs are involved in 4, 8, 12 and 16 film surveys respectively. Now we have the bite wing radiographs that is uh, periapical films are used to record the coronal portion. Mm -hmm. Uh, of both maxillary and mandibular teeth in one image okay you can see this maxillary and mandibular teeth in one image which is basically uh, identifying is to identifying the interdental caries so size one film is used for children and bigger two film is used in adult and also we can check the level of bone uh, next question is the incisal liability. It is the difference uh, between the uh, incisors of primary and permanent teeth because the permanent teeth are bigger in size, primary teeth is lesser. So the permanent teeth has to come in position of smaller teeth. So it needs a bigger space. So there is a liability of space. So how do the arches, maxillary and mandibular arches, gain that space that is the incisor liability so the liability of space which is required for the permanent incisors to get accommodated in position of primary incisors which is actually very smaller than the permanent teeth so that is the size of permanent is greater than the deciduous counterparts and they need more space for proper alignment so this difference in space required is known as liability so in maxillary it is 7.6 mandible is 6 mm so it is compensated by increased intercanine distance is increased by 3 to 4 mm and interdental spacing uh, and there is labial more of a labial eruption of incisors in deciduous teeth it is more upright position but in permanent it is more labially erupted that's how uh, they overcome this liability so that was all about the first part that was a very short session so uh, there are many sessions coming up so i'll come up with the next part in uh, pediatric or pediatric uh, dentistry question paper discussion thank you